Uh, Captain Griffith, good morning to you and thank you for being with us yet again for this discussion. Hi, good morning. It is always my pleasure to be on with you guys. Well, it's always our pleasure to have you and especially after what would have been a very big moment for you, Monday's local government election. It was the first election for the NTA. It was the first election with you in the role of being a political leader. Um, the results have been out since Tuesday morning, and we know that the UNC got 1, 173,961, and the NTA got 15,997. When you add the UNC and the NTA's figure, it is more or less just about 190,000, close to 200,000 votes. What are some of your thoughts on the outcome of Monday's election? Well, definitely it is a step in the right direction. It is a big step. It sets the tone for the general election. It shows, as I said, that if that any time the, the, the major third political party joins with the UNC, the PNM will be defeated. It happened in 1986 with the ULF and the UNR uh, and other parties. It happened in, in uh, 2010. Uh, with the UNC under Kamala Prasad Bissessa, and, it, and, we, and you see it again, 60,000 votes. I mean, it is amazing that a prime minister and a political party that is in government is trying to, to show some degree of success. They, they were defeated comprehensively. People are looking, okay, they're saying it's 7-7. Seven, seven. I'll come to that. But you are talking about 60,000 votes more. That is almost 30% more. The alliance between the UNC and the NTA got over the PNM, 130,000 to almost 190,000. And it says so much about the problems we have with our own local government. So when Keith Rowley speaks his nonsense about local government reform, it should start right there with an arrangement that is made at point 14, for example, when you when you put all of the votes in the six districts together, it comes up to probably at times almost the same as one seat that the UNC would have won in Coover or um, or Princess Town. And, and, it, and, and this was deliberately done again by the PNM to give the interpretation that, well, yeah, so if we have a corporation um, and we'll be trying to, to, to see who wins and who will lose, let's just do it by the number of corporations. Again, in, in Woodbrook, we have people that uh, PNM won 400 and, well, sorry, 380 odd votes to 180. That is unbelievable. That's what you will get probably in one polling division one, um, in, in parts that where UNC won. And that's why when you see the map now, the political map, you're seeing... 90% practically yellow and just corners red. So it shows that if you want to deal with, with um, local government reform, you have to transform that whole concept of where you're trying to fool the public into believing, well, it is really a 7-7 draw, when it is that you would have seen an annihilation of the PNM. And that 30%, that is, that is, almost, that is even more than the success when it is that the People's Partnership won in the local in the general election in 2010. So it shows that it, it has worked. Um, let us not be fooled up with this 7-7 seven, seven thing. You, you're looking at the numbers, you can see that, and those same numbers will transcend into the general election. So obviously we have built a framework towards what is required for 2025. Certain persons have been concerned because um, they, you know, sometimes people want to be big fish in a small pond. So there will be a few people who did not want it to happen. There will be others who are very concerned about this alliance. They will try to discredit it because they know what happens every time there's, there's such an alliance. But it is happening. It is going to happen. And it will continue to take place going into 2025. Captain Griffith, let's look at the issue of the NTA. This was the first election contested by the NTA. And the NTA got, let's say, 16,000. We'll round it off to the nearest three i think the difference is just three between sixteen thousand and, and and the figure there now the unc and the nta collectively got uh a roughly just under two hundred thousand votes in 2019 the unc got more than two hundred thousand votes they got two hundred thousand two or i should say two hundred and two thousand yes. votes and in 2016, yes. they got just about 121,000. You keep saying that when yes. the alliances come together, when those opposed to the PNM come together, they are defeated. However, this year, those came together and got 190,000, less than 200,000. But when the UNC ran by itself in 2019, they got over 200,000. How does that support the view that you have expressed 
that it is when people come together that the game is displaced. Oh, sure. Because what you left out, I don't know if it was accidental, you didn't add to the fact that PNM lost over 30,000 votes in the same 2019. Because PNM got, I think it was 160,000 votes odd in 2019, and it went down to 130,000. So the, the, the reduction of the PNM was much greater than the reduction of the UNC. So the UNC got 202,000 odd in 2019. It was almost the same, roughly, in, uh, in uh, 2023, adding the NTA votes. Because the, the, so with that, whereas the UNC stayed almost the same, the PNM lost about thirty thousand votes. So therein therein answers your question right there. The majority of those would have now gone now into the NTA or shifted across to the UNC. So the fact of the matter is that the reduction in votes of the UNC has nothing to do with the alliance. It has to do with a massive reduction in voter turnout. Because the voter turnout in 2019 was 34 point something percent, and this time it was 30 percent. But when you look at that, that reduction was more of PNM voters not coming out based on their disgust and disenchantment with Keith Rowley than people being um, disenchanted with the UNC. So therein lies the, the situation, right? How you can move from 34 percent to 30 percent, and the UNC moving from 202,000 to roughly 190 almost roughly on par, but the PNM moving from 160,000 to 130,000. So the massive reduction in that voter turnout from 34 to 30% was primarily PNM voters not turning out or shifting across to the UNC and the NTA. So therein, that, that answers your question. Well, I'm glad that you brought up the issue of the voter turnout because it brings me to the figure of the turnout. In 2016, Captain Griffith, the, the turnout was 34.3%. In 2019, the last election was 34.7, and in this round, it was 30%. You are saying that the drop in the turnout is largely attributed to PNM supporters, um, or the PNM losing its support. Uh, but however, if we look at what the UNC got before, which is 202,584, and you look at what the UNC NTA got this round, it takes us to uh, roughly 190,000. Therefore, meaning a drop yes. in 12,000 votes. Now, this generally, this local government election was contested as though it was a general election. So many analysts said so. We had the return of Jack Warner. We had the creation of alliance between yourself and Mrs. Passard Bicessa. We had a lot of um, recognizable language, light up the matic, and a lot of big rallies, um, joint um, political platforms. Why do you think? that despite this extent of hype, even the UNC NTA suffered a drop in the overall turnout, in their overall turnout, as well, opposed to last year. Yeah, but I, and again, yeah, and again, so you're looking at a difference of 12,000 with the UNC to the UNC alliance, but you see a difference, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's over 30,000 by the PNM. No, you're right. So that's almost three to one. Yeah, so for every one person that did not vote, in that 12,000, three people didn't vote for the PNM. So that's a massive difference. So it shows that the the, the persons who actually spend more time being disenchanted would have been PNM voters. Uh, but but having said that, it, it, there seems to be uh, a degree of persons not really seeing the value of a local government election. And this is not a matter for major concern. The way that certain persons are speaking, that, that they are trying to discredit both major political parties because people are disenchanted. Just do the data. In the United States, the, the voter turnout for selection of a president is almost on par to what we do for the selection of a prime minister in our general election, 60 to 65% odd. When there are, there are countries with the equivalent to this type of election, which is seen as a, 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 a election at a lower level to a general election, the voter turnout is usually just about the same thing. So it, it, it shows that certain pers most persons in countries, they don't really push heavy on this type of an election worldwide as they do in a general election to select a prime minister, a president, or a government. And, and again, more importantly, is that when you look at the difference in a local government election, 13 to 34%, to a general election in 60%, the majority of those, you know who they are? The ONR, the NAR, the COP, the, US, the NTA type voters. That Those independent thinkers that are, so most of that 30 percent, 34 percent will be the diehard PNM or, um, or UNC till I die supporters. So they, they, they have a strong degree of passion and emotion for any aspect of an election. The independent thinkers, 
they, they, so you're not going to see that impact in a local government as you would in a general. That is why in the general election, the ONR working with the ULF, PNM were annihilated 33 in the general election in um, 2010 with the COP and the UNC was 29-12. So those independent voters, that 150,000, is based on the COP's last turnout in 2007 and this election itself. Because when you look at the 16,000 odd that the NTA got, you divide that by 31 as roughly 500 votes per district. Had we gone up in 30, 141 districts, and definitely we would have acquired many more votes because we took the 31 hardest seats, the 31 safest seats by the PNM. When you multiply 500 by that, by that 140, you will get 70,000. So in a general election, it will be doubled as a 60% turnout. Guess what? You get the same 140,000 that the COP got. So the NT is almost on par with what the COP was in 2007. And But those persons rarely come out in full force during a general election campaign. So there's no need for major concern. What I think we need to do, however, <clears throat> definitely there's a concern that I have seen of younger people not showing that interest as they should. And that is where we intend to put a heavy campaign over the next year for those persons between the ages of 16 to 40. And I use 40 as that is still politically young, where these individuals have not been brainwashed, manipulated, or directed by their parents that this is a PNM or UNC home. Those are the individuals we intend to um, pull in and get them to understand. Those were the, the majority of my support as Commissioner of Police would have been the young voters, the young, sorry, the young citizens. So I need to try to turn that now into them supporting a political party that can assist them in uh, making sure we have a better country. Captain Griffith, <laughs> let's look at the issue of the middle ground vote because a lot of your campaign has been based on pulling that middle ground, non-PNM, non-UNC type of voter out and establishing the NT as the go-to space in which they can feel welcome. Um, you mentioned that the NTA would have been able to attract those people, but let's look at the seats that the NTA fought. The NTA did not fight 100 plus seats. The NTA did not fight um, uh, over 80 seats. The NTA fought very specific seats in very specific corporations. If I'm not mistaken, there was the Digo Martin Regional Corporation, there was the San Juan Lamentel Regional Corporation. Um, the Tunapuna Piaco Regional Corporation as well. And please correct me if I've uh, forgotten any of them. Arima, Port of Spain, and Point Fortin. Arima, Port of Spain, and Point Fortin. So there were about yep. six different corporations, five or six different corporations with NTA, yep, six, yep. and six different corporations with NTA um, candidates. But in those six corporations and in those seats, you did not have a UNC candidate. The tagline for the election was, where you see a UNC logo, vote UNC. Where you see a NTA logo, vote NTA. It therefore stands to yes. reason that persons who wanted to support the UNC NTA alliance would have voted for the UNC or NTA. There are persons who may have gotten um, NTA votes, or the UNC may have gotten NTA votes, but those votes were translated into UNC. But there were also persons Correct. who would have voted UNC in the last election who would have voted NTA. How do you respond to the view this morning that the votes the NTA got were not any middle ground voters, but were simply the 20,000 or out of the 20,000 voters that the UNC fell from last time? And this time, the UNC voters were the ones who just put their vote behind an NTA ballot. Oh, easy, easy. Because those 31 seats, the UNC, when they went up for those 31 seats, they were totally annihilated. Every single seat that the UNC went up for in that in those six corporations, other than point fourteen, the UNC lost by over 1,000 votes, 750, sorry, to 2,500 votes. 750 votes, you know, in a local government election is, a, is annihilation. So the UNC were totally annihilated in those seats um, in the corridor. We took those seats and turned it from 750 at times to less than 200. We chopped it. We cut major inroads in it. So that that answers your question. So this was not the 20,000. Um, this was seats that the UNC would have would have lost in in 2019 by over, as I said, 750 to 20, at times 2,500 votes. You can think of what that is in a, in a local government election. That is equivalent to losing by 7,000 odd votes in a general election. So that answers your question. 
Instead, what we were able to do was to cut so much into inroads into those that PN, those are the 31 safest PNM seats, and we were able to cut it all by half. That could only have been accomplished by the ONR, NAR, COP, NTA floating voters joining with those persons who would have voted for the UNC had the UNC put, put a, a candidate there. So that answers your question. The, and that is why it is, I think, the, the NT we're going to get an older one. That is why the two UNC candidates in Digo Martin, where those two UNC seats that, the, that UNC went in 2019 in Digo Martin, they lost by close to about 800 odd votes. Guess what? Um, the candidates for the UNC in those seats in Goodwood, La Puerta, and Bagatelle, they lost by less than 200 votes. You think that was UNC voters that caused that? No, it was the NTA voters that joined with the UNC voters. And the only reason UNC did not win those two seats, guess what? <clears throat> it was because of the PNM's B team, which was the PEP, that got 200 votes. So like, in other words, Marsha Walker, she lost by 175 votes. But the PP got 200 votes. Um, the Bagatelle candidate for the UNC, same thing. As well as Princess Town, <clears throat> as well as Sangre Grandi, as well as um, uh, Mayaru. There were there were seven seats that the UNC lost because the PP came in there and got 80 odd votes, and the PNM would have won by 20 or 30 odd votes. And I said it constantly on the platform. The PP, when you take red and you wash it several times, you will get orange. The PP was designed to be that spoiler party. They lost almost all their deposits, all is all. But they did their job. They got 80 odd votes, <clears throat> and the PNM winning by 20, 30, 5 votes, 15 votes. That was what happened, and it affected two UNC seats as well in Diego Martin. So I think there were seven seats that the UNC would have won. And I kept telling people, you vote for any party other than the, P than the UNC or the NT, you're indirectly going to help the PNM. And that is what happened. So the PP did their job. Going back to the NT, <clears throat> as I said, the only reason we were able to cut that massive amount was because the NT voters joined with the UNC voters. And also, <clears throat> had we gone into the other areas, which would have been much safer seats as what we are called COP areas, such as St. Augustine, <clears throat> um, San Grande, San Fernando, that has a strong <clears throat> third party presence of COP type voters, we would have acquired more than the average 500 votes in those 31 areas, which is why I said had we gone for all 141, we would have probably acquired the 70,000 votes. And additionally, that is what helped the UNC greatly in, in in destroying the PNM in Sangre Grande. It was because there was a greater UNC turnout, but there's a strong COP slash NTA presence in Sangre Grande. And that's why I went to I went to Sangre Grande and I walked personally on several occasions to tell those third constituency voters, whether you're ONR, NAR, COP, NT, we just change the initials. It, 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 it's always, it, it, we change the letters. It, it, that third constituency is there. Vote for the UNC candidate in San Grande. I said the same thing in San Fernando. It wasn't accidental that the UNC cut inroads into San Fernando. It was because of the support of the NTA. Because I went in there constantly five Saturdays straight, walking for several hours with Ali Bokas, with Shane Samuel, with Sasha Ali, which were the marginal seats to tell those floating voters, some of whom may have been disenchanted with the UNC and said they're not voting for the UNC again, or those who were marginal PNM and wanted to shift but were reluctant to vote for the UNC. I told them a vote for the UNC candidates is a vote for Gary Griffith and the NTA, which showed the value, the substance, the significance, and the productivity of this alliance, which is why the PNM lost, instead of 40,000, this time they lost by 60,000. Let's talk about the way forward. Where does the NTA see itself getting older men because after the votes are cast, 25% of the votes entitles any political party to an older man in the corporation. Um, what can you tell us about that? Well, I think we will have, we'll have one in, uh, in Diego Martin. And uh, again, that was the unfortunate thing because this all this, this selection of the older man is something that really affected us. Because I could tell you, had we had there not been a situation with the older man in 20. 10, when the COP had um, the, the, the local government, the COP went up for 51 of the 139 seats. We only went up for 31. But we would have acquired more. Um, Kamala Prasad Misesa understood the maths and the tactics. That is her, her, her vision and understanding 
the concept of the whole being greater than the sum of the parts. We but had had we gone into say some of those San Grande seats, some of those San Fernando seats, we would have probably won because you know that NTA, those two voters will cause a little flip over. So we would have probably won that seat in San Fernando to cause the fifth seat to go to the alliance. We'd have um we'd have easily won more seats in, in San Grande and so forth. And to the Puna and Arima. But the problem is when you do that, you will go, it is going to affect you in the selection of the alderman. So I, 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 we, we said, look, it makes no sense for us to go into and, and, and make Arima equal. Um, that's why the UNC took five, we took two. Same thing with Tunapuna, they took um, 12, we took four. Um, and then we stayed away totally from San Fernando and San Grande. But I gave the verbal support and the request for those floating voters to vote for the, end, for the UNC candidate. So there, there, there was a concern with that and with the selection of the alderman that caused us to have to be a little more um, tactical in how we selected. But the main thing is what the NTA brought to the table was to ensure by us getting the NTA supporters to vote for the UNC candidate in Sangri Grandi. It, you, you saw now, Sangri Grandi is now a safe corporation for, for the alliance against the PNM. San Fernando is now neck and neck and, and, and it will go over eventually to the UNC NT alliance. And then let's just look at the main one that, that, that you asked your question, is the corridor. Who takes the corridor? wins the election in that Tuna Puna Piaco Corporation. There were several seats that the UNC um, were very far behind and we were able to cut it down to just less than 20, 30 odd votes. And that is going to be the difference. And uh, that would have been the difference towards winning that corporation. Lopino, uh, La Florida, for example, the UNC lost by 1,200 votes in 2019. Our candidate lost by less than 170 votes. Massive cut. You're talking about those 900 persons who previously voted for the PNM shifted. So it shows that that the, the system works by forming this alliance. And definitely, remember, who in St. Joseph Tunapuna wins the election? And then that also goes into the other marginal seats, going into Arima, La Hoketa, um, Tal Paro, <clears throat> the Abedi Omero. So it sets the tone that what the NT will put our focus on will be those marginal seats to make sure we can get those floating voters to come on board, to join and understand and appreciate the fact that this time around, the individuals who hold the hierarchy of the political parties that are this time being Kamala Prasad, Mises and myself, we have a good synergy with understanding there's going to be mutual respect. You would have seen, listen, and I'm being very honest, in 2010, you saw this type of, it seemed to be a marriage of convenience with COP hierarchy and the UNC. To the point that, I mean, even myself, I stayed out of it. I, I, I went neutral. But, and, and there was not that type of, of close relationship between even the supporters. You, in this, this um, campaign, it was unbelievable. That blue and yellow was mixing and that mine, it looked like a carib bottle. It was like carib. That yellow and blue, there was such a good synergy, harmonious relationship. They were like brothers and sisters throughout the campaign. And that is what we probably didn't pick up and feel in 2010. That unification of these political parties is going to get much bigger, stronger, and it is going to expand. And we are going to see a repeat of 2010. Well, I know that you compare the UNC and it's looking like a curry bottle, but I'm concerned that some people drink stag, <laughs> as the case may be. <laughs> well, no, no, well, remember, I have shut down, so there's no, no more green. <laughs> there's, no, <laughs> there's no stag again. Well, we know for sure Corona is over. But Captain Griffith, you spoke, you started speaking about the UNC NT alliance and you referred to the PP as being the PNMB team. How do you intend to maintain credibility? Because as it is, some people are saying the NTA is the UNCB team, and that the many of the people <laughs> who are that you are UNC minister with Kamala Prasad Bisesa, that Mrs. Dyer Griffith was a UNC People's Partnership um, senator, that many of the 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 um, conversations sound similar to the COP type conversations at the point in time. Over the next year and a half or two years, going into a general election, you know that's quite a quite a time to hold out for. How do you tend to approach that? Oh, definitely because of that same thing I spoke about with the youth vote. Uh, yes, so because, remember, most persons over 40, they would have established their foothold and they are not going to change. So they're going to be PNM or UNC till they die, regardless of what. Uh, so 
it is difficult to change the views of those individuals. The, the minds that can be influenced in the proper and productive and positive manner would be young voters. Many young persons are not in the in the habit now where parents are seen as a PNM or UNC house. In fact, one of my candidates was thrown out of his house because they said this is a PNM house. How dare you get out and they throw all this stuff out? That is that is sometimes how this thing is. It's no longer a cult, it is a cult. But the young persons are not that easily influenced. In fact, because of technology, because of social media, young persons are educating their parents, mommy, daddy, because being a, a PNM till you die is not going to help me. It's not going to put food on our table. It's not going to help our economy, improve our health system, improve our education, make me safer. So that is where we intend to put focus to explain to young persons. Because between 16 and 40, listen, you need to decide which political party, which leadership, like Kamala Prasad, Bissessa and Gary, or Keith Rowley, who's going to make you safer, who's going to provide better systems for you, for health, education, the economy, better roads, who you decide. Don't decide based on blind loyalty. Blind loyalty is if you support a, a football team and you stay and support that team till you die, like me and Manchester United, where I've suffered for 10 years, but I'll stick with my man. You, you do that for your select of sporting team, not a political party. Young persons are, are, can be influenced to understand that. So we intend to put heavy emphasis on the young voters for them to make a decision and to come out and vote because that reduction you would have seen of 30%, I, I think it's because young persons, they don't see the value, they don't see the options available, and they don't see them willing to make that effort. We intend to show that that third constituency can provide that and bring in all those youth votes because my intention really and truly I don't want a 22-19 or 23-18. We need to get that constitutional majority to such an extent that we can amend the constitution to put an end to the madness this country has endured over the last few decades, thanks to the PNM, where it is you have, uh, you have corporations selected in such a way to manipulate and fool the country into believing that it is a 7-7 in a local government election when you lost by 30% less than, than other political parties because you have a cooperation like point fourteen, as I said, where persons are winning 300 votes to 100. You, you, in St. James, you're winning 400 votes to 200. And then other cooperations are about five times that amount getting the same um, recognition as a, as a, of a seat. If this was done in a proper manner of proportion, the UNC NT Alliance would have won probably about ten to six or something like that, or, or eleven to eleven to, to eight. So it, it shows that the cooperation that all that, but all those things cannot be done. Proportional representation cannot be done unless we have a clear majority in parliament. So I'm not going. I'm not going in here. Twenty two, nineteen, twenty thirteen. So and for the only way that can happen is for me to push out those youth votes and get them out there to, so we can have the equivalent annihilation that what took place in 1986. Well, Captain Griffith, I must say I'm very surprised. I didn't think that after all of the blue you were spreading across the country, you would have been supporting a yellow and red logo team. I thought that at least you would have been not more supporting Manchester, <laughs> but Chelsea might have been more of your flavour. But say what, I suppose. You will think. I, I would think so, but all is well in love and more, including football and politics, I suppose. Captain Griffith, this is where we um, end this morning's discussion, but I want to thank you very much for being with us as we examine the consequences and outcomes of Monday's local government election. And we certainly do look forward to our next conversation with you on National Matters. My pleasure. Anytime.